Hi, I'm Kyle Stedman. I want to show you a few things that I do when I'm messing with lots of tracks in Audacity. I'm assuming you already know some basics. So let me go over a couple of those basics just as quick reminders to show you what we're looking at here. So what we have is one mono track that um, I've labeled voice. I, I labeled it voice just by clicking that and clicking name, renaming it, right? Um, another stereo track that I've called music. Now I know that one's mono because I only see one line and down here I see two lines, right? Like that's the left channel and the right channel. Okay. Um, you can see my voice starts and stops and that these are separate clips. I made those clips by clicking in the middle of a clip and hitting control I on a PC and then moving the clips around using this time shift tool. If you don't know what I'm talking about, again, uh, watch another video or just bear with me here. You can see my music track has the volume kind of going, um, staying pretty standard and then getting quiet here while I talk over it and then getting loud again. So let's just hear this really quick just so you can hear what we're talking about here. No matter what, this had better be the part before the music. This had better come right in the middle of the music. And no matter what, this has to be the end. So you kind of heard a couple things there, right? You heard how the beat started right after I stopped talking here. That was a really purposely timed thing. I'm going to play it again just by clicking the timeline up here as a really quick and easy way to start playing wherever you want. Come right in the middle of the music. Right? I really wanted that beat, bam, right after that. And then I wanted it to get quiet as I talked here, right? And no matter what, this has to be the end. So my point is that I'm doing a lot of very carefully timed things, but if I go back and edit, I'm, there's a lot of ways that I can screw things up and mess with my timing. So let me just show you a couple of those. So for instance, if I highlight the selection tool and I'm like, you know what, I don't really need this middle part. And I decided to select part of my vocal track and I hit delete. Whoa, did you see what happened? This second part just moved to the left, even though the bottom part didn't move at all. So suddenly, I, I have the problem of moving everything over and now this timing is totally off. You can see like right where the beat starts, um, this is coming right in the middle. So I'm going to undo that by hitting control Z. Um, of course, it's under edit too. Uh, I, I'm going to do a lot of control Z, control Y when I want to undo and redo, just like in most programs. Uh, so uh, what do I do? How can I make that not mess up? Uh, well, here's what I would usually do if I want to delete something but not make it mess with other things later on in the track. I use the, the little silence button instead and it looks looks like this. If you hover over it, you see it says silence audio. Now if I highlight something and I click that, watch what happens. It's like the clip is still kind of there. It's like it still exists, but because those um, little towers got so teeny tiny, that means it's completely silent because I clicked the silence thing, right? But it didn't mess with anything after it. So now, like, sure, I'm not coming in and talking at that point anymore, but everything later is is good. That can be super, super useful when you don't want to mess things up later on the track. I mean, what if this is like a an hour long, a two hour long track? Uh, sometimes it's really hard to remember what you're looking at um, and when. Well, let me show you one one other thing that I sometimes do. What if what if I realize, oh my goodness, there's a sound effect that I really want to play at the very beginning of this entire thing. So uh, maybe I go down and um, I open up my documents and I, I find a WAV file that I've downloaded and I, I drag it in. That I think is the easiest way to import. There's other ways to do it, but I think if I just drag it in, um, you see what happens now down here at the bottom, that's the thing I just dragged in. Um, if I scroll up a little, you can see there's the tracks we were messing with a second ago. Um, often after I do that, by the way, I go to view fit vertically and watch, watch what happens. It, it automatically says, oh, you've got this many tracks. We're going to try to make them all fit. Um, I can also kind of drag the bottom of these and make ones that I'm messing with bigger or smaller. I can use this little button to kind of super collapse or not. You know, there's a, there's a lot of ways Audacity lets me mess with things. I, again, I use just uh, view fit vertically a lot. So now what I've got is the sound effect that started at the beginning of the track, but of course it's not before everything else. So uh, one thing I could do if I wanted to do everything um, and re-time everything is I could just move things track by track, right? Like I could grab my music um, and move it over. By the way, did you see what I did? I, I, I clicked this time shift tool. It's also F5, um, which lets me move things instead of select things as opposed to what I was using earlier. Okay, um, I can move that down here. I could manually find the right place again with that, manually find the right place again with that, manually find the right place again. And you know, and, and it'll it'll be somewhat okay, right? 
and then you know it starts the way it did before um but let me undo all that control z control z control z um and show you one other thing that I, I think is really useful to know is this uh, little sync lock tracks button. Now, now watch what happens if I click sync lock. Um, you see it kind of like uh, a few things happen. It, it looks like it's pressed in. I see the little sync lock button over all of these and anything that I've highlighted, um, it highlights it. Let me just highlight something else too. It's always got that little sync lock clock in the background. Um, that wasn't there before. If I unclick it, um, you see the little sync lock clock doesn't show up. So if I click sync lock, now if I go to the time shift tool and move anything, oh my goodness, everything moves at once, which can be kind of nice, right? Like, um, so I, I could, for instance, uh, not add that yet. I could drag everything over to make a little space for it, go back, <laughs> drag my guy back in again, um, and now you see it it fits. I, I could have, even if I wanted, I could like drag it up to that track. Um, I couldn't drag it to the top one because this is a stereo track. So I could only drag it to another stereo track. I can't drag it to a mono track. Um, so I could just like butt it up right there. Um, I could then delete this sound um, because time sync is on, everything will delete and we'll move together. Okay. All my timing is good. I set it up. That's great. Um, so that's, that's a legitimately okay way to do things. But I want to, I want to show you one other thing thing that I've discovered that I think is actually one of the least um, clear things about Audacity. You see, I'm, I'm just undoing everything. Um, there's this really interesting thing that has to do with label tracks. So just hold sync lock in your mind for a second while I show you something about label tracks. Uh, uh, sometimes, obviously, you might want to label a certain thing in your in your track. I, I'm being really repetitive here, but uh, let's say um, I, I have the select tool and I click right here and I'm like, ooh, this is where the beat drops. So I wanna go to tracks, add label at selection. You saw it was also control B and I can say, you know, beat drops right here. And then um, maybe down here, I wanna add a label saying like, um, control B getting boring. I, I mean, I don't have to use all caps, right? I can, whatever I wanna do. Uh, in a really long track, again, that can be useful to say, hey, remember, this is what happens here, this is what happens here. Um, another interesting thing about labels is that um, you can do file export multiple. And when you do, you can split the file up based on the labels, and you can even include uh, the label track name in the file name. So for instance, what I've done before is I've recorded a super long concert, and it's all one track. Then I go through and I add labels where the, the tracks start, I, I call them, um, you know, number one, song title this. Then I can export as multiple tracks uh, with the right file names. It can be super, super helpful. That's the main normal thing you would use label tracks for. And you might be like, what are you even talking about? I thought we were talking about sync lock. Well, I want to show you something interesting here. Like, let me um, go back now and add that same audio file in here again. Uh, and then like before, I'm gonna go view fit vertically. So now you see I've, I have four tracks now, right? Like there's the two tracks up top, there's this label track, like there's a whole track for the labels and there's this bottom part. Well, now sync lock is on because the button's on. Uh, watch what happens when I when I move things around up here. Well, that that's actually kind of weird. Uh, only the top few things are moving, not, not the bottom thing. Remember how before when sync lock was on, all tracks were synced? Well, actually what sync lock does is it says anything that's in a chunk that's separated by label tracks moves together. Uh, does that does that make sense? So I, I, I could even go to like tracks, um, add new label track. There's another label track. Um, and then I could drag a whole another sound in here. And how about, let me just like add a couple, right? Uh, Again, let me uh, view the fit vertically to make this make sense again. Uh, so you see now I have label track. Let me make that a little smaller. Um, I have label track. So now with my sync lock on, anything that's in that chunk, everything below that label track moves together. Everything in this chunk between the two label tracks moves together. It's only, it's only that one. And everything up here moves together. Uh, can you kind of imagine how useful that might be in certain ways? If I want to be like, uh, you know, my old situation was I want this sound at the beginning and then I want these a little here. Uh, I'm going to just delete these other ones. 
Um, another button I use a lot, by the way, is uh, where'd it go? It's this guy here, uh, Fit Project. Now that I deleted those longer tracks and I hit Fit Project, watch what happens. It zoom, zooms horizontally. Oops. It, it zooms horizontally exactly where I want things. Um, now that I deleted some things, I can again fit. Uh, I can again fit uh, vertically. Everything's good. So, uh, my my whole point here is that sometimes if I want to move things around, uh, turning sync lock on and off and adding label tracks is kind of the way to do it. So let me show you like one one other example of what I might do. What if what if I was like uh, I don't really like this. Um, narration anymore so i'm gonna like record a new one so let's let's just do it right um, i'll i'll put the cursor about where i want it and then i'll, I'll try it this is my new narration for the middle but uh oh what if it goes a little bit longer than the old one okay well now i've got that track um i've got a few things i could do like if it fit i could actually drag this mono track all the way into the top mono track like I've got to fit vertically again to make this work. You see how much I love that. Um, like I could literally drag this, move it around up there. Um, but it's actually it's actually not going to fit between. I'm trying to get it in between there, but it's too long. Uh, if I if I silence this old one, remember highlight silence. Um, it still counts as space, so I still can't get it in there. So I sometimes find myself doing um, kind of crazy things. I'm like, you know what? I want a label track between there. You say I just drag the label track, like move this whole track into that section. So now th this stuff moves together, but you know, this moves separately. I, I know this is getting pretty impractical from what we were talking about originally, but my, my point is that sometimes when you want to put stuff in the beginning or the middle or the end, you have to use the silence and you have to use multiple tracks. So happy editing.